Hello and welcome to the Rotary E-Club of Silicon Valley's program for this week. My name is Mitty. I'm club president for this Rotary Club. Every week we bring to you a new program about technology, education, innovation, or humanitarian service. And this week we're excited to bring you a program about Rotary Peace Scholars. Um, we have our guest speaker on today. And before I introduce her, I'd like to introduce one of our members on this recording. Um, our member Ken is on this recording. Ken, go ahead and wave at people. Uh, Ken is one of our members in the San Francisco Bay Area. He is currently a student at Ohlone College studying software engineering, uh, and he is also a student senator there now, uh, and he also has a background as a veteran. Um, so here we have Ken. And next to Ken, of course, we have our guest speaker, Lauren. Um, Cofero. So Lauren is, um, let's see, Lauren is a Rotary Peace Scholar and I actually met Lauren a couple of years ago um, in 2014. We were together at a Young Professional Summit um, for Rotary in Chicago um, where Rotary gathered about 30, 31 of um, us young professionals throughout the United States for this awesome summit um, there and uh, Lauren's also a former rotor actor, so we had some connections prior to that as well, mutual connections um, that kind of connected us there. So very excited to have Lauren as our guest speaker talking to us more about what she's been up to um, in England. Um, so Lauren, if you'd like to take it away. Thanks so much, Mitty, for inviting me to speak and for the introduction. I'm glad to uh, be speaking with my first uh, Rotary E-Club meeting, so it's a milestone for me. Uh, I am a Rotary Peace Fellow currently at the University of Bradford in England. And just before I get started um, talking about my experience as a Peace Fellow, I wanted to kind of share what is the Rotary Peace Fellowship. The Rotary Peace Fellowship is one of Rotary's flagship programs, and every year they send 100 Peace Fellows um, 50 go to a professional certificate program that is three months long in Thailand. And then there are five other Rotary Peace Centers that are a master's level degree program at the university. And they send 10 fellows each year to every one. And it is a worldwide competition. So the way the process works um, and how I came to the Rotary Peace Fellowship is um, you apply through your local level club that then sends on your application to the district who then uh, nominates you to Rotary International and they choose from that pool. And something that's unique about the Rotary Peace Fellowship that um, maybe not all Rotarians know is that it's actually funded entirely uh, by the Rotary Foundation. So unlike the Global uh, Grant Scholar where there is a matching element from district funds matched by the foundation, it is completely funded by the foundation. And actually, a large amount of the Peace Fellowships are funded via endowments. Uh, my Rotary Peace Fellowship is endowed by Alan Nancy Jubitz, who are in Oregon. And um, more and more, the Rotary Foundation is funding the fellowships that way. So um, how did I become a Rotary Peace Fellow? And what brought me to this, this point? I think to answer that question, I wanna share a little bit about where I'm from. Um, so I grew up in Pittsburgh, and this is a map of Pittsburgh. Uh, usually this presentation is for a more international audience, so hopefully those of you in Silicon Valley should know where Pittsburgh is, but it is quite um, sometimes like an another country, so <laughs> in case you had any questions uh, or doubts in your mind, now you know. And so this is my family. And this photo was taken right before I left for the Rotary Peace Fellowship. And I thought sharing a series of photos of my family, um, an attempt to take a nice family portrait would uh, really help you understand a bit about my family dynamic. So this is attempt one, two, <laughs> three, and four. We made it and got a good family photo but um, to be honest actually uh, we never got the right family photo i had to photoshop my dad's head um from a good photo onto this one um so this is my family my mom dad brother and sister 
um, and my brother has um, intellectual disabilities, severe intellectual disabilities. And so, as I hope you saw from that series of photos, um, we have a, um, a very lively family dynamic and it was um, pretty uh, much like that all while I was growing up. Uh, growing up with a brother uh, with special needs really um, transformed and, and made me who I am today. Um, working and volunteering and living with people um, with profound disabilities um, made me more conscious of the diverse uh, backgrounds and abilities of people in the world and made me really always want to reach out and help people understand my brother and help people understand other people like my brother. And this really shaped my foundation, my identity as a mediator. But uh, like all young people, I needed kind of my own outlet. And I really found that growing up in theater. Uh, that's me right at the end of high school. And theater became kind of my whole life where I could get on the stage and have this self-expression um, outside of my house. And so shortly thereafter, after graduating college and uh, graduating from high school, I made the decision to move to Chicago, which you should also know where that is, and attend Northwestern University. And I actually went to Northwestern originally to pursue theater. Uh, this is just a map to show you how close I lived to Rotary International, uh, right there in Evanston, just down the street. So uh, maybe it was fate that I found Rotary. But again, I went to pursue theater, but what I wasn't expecting was a series of events my very first week at Northwestern that really changed my path dramatically. Um, the first was that I won a fellowship to go to Egypt the two weeks before university started. And Egypt was a really eye-opening experience for me. I was there um, with a youth delegation, with youth from all over the Middle East and North Africa. And I really got to learn a lot about the many different cultures and the diversity and political issues that I didn't have a lot of awareness about. And that really opened up my mind to another part of the world. The second thing that happened is that I found Rotaract. So actually my very first week as I was walking through campus, they used to at Northwestern have paper flyers uh, taped all over the ground. And I li quite literally stumbled over a flyer that said, do you want to go to Ecuador? And at this time, just coming back from Egypt with that henna still in my hand, I said, yes, I need to get out and see the world. So I went to the meeting so that I could go to Ecuador, but what I found was Rotaract. So Rotaract, I don't have to tell you all um, what a great organization Rotaract is. I know many of you have probably been part of Rotaract, like uh, MIDI, and, um, but Rotaract really changed my direction because it expanded um, the way that I engaged with the world. I got to do a lot of projects with my Rotaract Club. Um, we focused really on international development projects um, like this one in Guatemala, in uh, Peru doing earthquake reconstruction, um, in Guatemala again. And Rotaract really, for me, I think filled a kind of need in my life that um, I didn't realize I had until I was more of an adult, which was this need to help bring people together to connect with people um, and this kind of experience I had growing up with uh, we're spending a lot of time with people with disabilities kind of um, instilled in me a, need, a, a desire to do service, to um, help connect people across cultures and to you know, work with people um, across those contexts. So um, I can credit Rotaract with um, a lot of the direction of my life. And it's that kind of combination of experiences that ultimately led, ultimately led me to my job at Greenheart International in Chicago, where I worked after graduation for five years, facilitating intercultural exchange programs. So I worked to bring people from all over the world to the US to have um, an intercultural exchange experience. And the point of these programs 
which are under the auspice of the U.S. Department of State, is to build mutual understanding between people from the U.S. and other countries in the world. And there I met a lot of like-minded people, um, which gave me a lot of hope that this, um, there's a big community of people who feel the same way. Um, I also got the chance to travel to a lot more um, areas of the world and to engage and work within a lot of different cultures. And so I knew after working in this context that I really wanted to take this a step further. And I wanted to do a cultural exchange and diplomacy programs, but work specifically um, with cultures who were um, in conflict. So using diplomacy and dialogue for intercultural conflict mediation. So that's what brought me to Bradford. Um, this here is a link to a video that I actually won't show you now since um, you're on YouTube and um, it's highly accessible via YouTube and Vimeo, uh, but it's a video um, called Lauren Cafaro, uh, Peace Fellows Journey that was done by Rotary, the Rotary International that kind of um, talks about how I got to the Peace Fellowship. So feel free to look that up. So when I got to Bradford, um, the first couple months were a lot of uh, adventures and full of the kind of experiences that I would have uh, expected and hoped for when I moved to Northern England. So the first question is, where is Bradford and what is this town like? Uh, Bradford is the home of one of the Rotary Peace Centers. The University of Bradford, right, actually today, just celebrated its 50 years. And uh, it is a university in the kind of central part of the uh, island of Great Britain, but the northern part of England. So uh, you can see we're about three hours from London and three hours from Edinburgh. And Bradford itself is a really interesting place to study peace. It is the oldest peace studies center um, in the world, the oldest peace studies department and it has a lot of prestige because of that. The city of Bradford used to be actually one of the wealthiest cities in the whole of the UK. You could see in that photo the amazing town hall, and it's really indicative of that because it was the center of the wool and textile trade. But as you probably know, um, just like we see with a lot of industries in the US, um, it really tanked. Uh, a lot of that um, processing went overseas, and Bradford went through many years of uh, really difficult times. Um, what Bradford is like now, um, during um, this period, a lot of new people have moved to Bradford, a lot of immigrants. So actually the Bradford City Center where the university is located and where I live is 60% minorities and a, mostly uh, most of that population being Asian. Um, so it's a very interesting place uh, to study uh, with a very international group of students. It's also been the center of a lot of tension in the country um, in the past 20 years. Um, and because of that, also the center of a lot of peace building efforts. So these are just a series of uh, increasingly unflattering photos uh, that document the beginning of my time in Bradford um, and all the joys of living abroad. Um, this is my boyfriend, uh, partner, Philip, uh, trying to fit in the car with all our belongings. Um, I learned uh, some things about myself, like I don't fit in most doors in England. They don't make shoes in my size. I had a lot of interesting uh, hikes and encounters with wildlife. That's a vulture. <laughs> I joined some local sports clubs. This, this really flattering photo is me uh, on the scuba team. But the things that's harder, the thing that's harder for me to uh, quantify or tell stories about uh, is the learning that took place, the learning that I personally had during my time studying at Bradford. Um, this is me turning in my very first master's essay. Um, but that learning was ultimately the highlight of my time here. And I've had a lot of great opportunities to put what, what I've learned in the classroom into action. 
actually our theme this year for our final Rotary Peace Seminar is peace through action. And uh, I think that we really tried to live that this year by getting outside of the classroom. Uh, some of those experiences that I had, um, this is a list of the, the courses that I took, which were a pretty uh, wide range that run the gamut. Um, being at Bradford was an opportunity to kind of expand my focus from where it had very much narrowed during my professional life and look at other regions of the world and, and other ways to address problems. So these are some of the more learning experiences that I had and opportunities that I had to get outside of the classroom while I was at Bradford. Uh, this is me in Sao Paulo at the Rotary International Convention, uh, which was immediately prior to me leaving, where I had the opportunity to connect with a lot of Rotarians from around the world and other Peace Fellows. I used some of the um, generous conference funding that the Rotary Peace Fellowship gives to go to Berlin to take a course on arts-based cultural diplomacy. Um, we also had the chance to get over to Norway in the dead of winter <laughs> to exchange with the Rotary Peace Fellows from Uppsala University in Sweden. And we, while this is, looks like a very fun and, and social photo, most of the time was actually spent uh, learning from and about the Nobel Peace Prize. And also the kind of work that Norway does in mediation and peace building. So we got to go to the Norwegian Foreign Ministry, we went to the Nobel Peace Institute and the museum, and we connected with Rotarians there. We went to Belfast for a team building weekend where we, yes, got to do some exploring, uh, like this photo of Giants Causeway shows, but we also got to speak with the Belfast Rotary Club, learn about their projects, learn a lot about the history of Belfast and Northern Ireland and the troubles there. I also got the chance to connect with a lot of Rotarians, travel around Northern England and speak at different Rotary clubs, and also to volunteer uh, within the UK, I started volunteering for this organization, Peace Jam. Uh, I think that this is where a theme, a recurring theme of my peace fellowship started, which was revolving around Nobel laureates. Uh, it started in Oslo, uh, going to the Nobel Institute, and continued on Peace Jam when I got to uh, volunteer at this conference, uh, which uh, this picture features Rigoberta Minchutum. She is a Nobel laureate who won the Peace Prize in uh, 1992 uh, for her work for indigenous rights in Guatemala. I also got the chance to meet amazing classmates from all over the world um, and make great friendships. And I think that that was actually one of the most rewarding parts of the fellowship was learning from these classmates who were from so many different countries. So ultimately my, um, my time during the year led to my summer internship. Something that's unique about the Rotary Peace Fellowship is that you uh, have a summer internship, an applied field experience. And my work volunteering for Peace Jam, which is this amazing peace education organization that works with 14 uh, different Nobel laureates to inspire youth and young people to have action in their lives and in their communities for peace. Um, I ultimately had the chance to work with them in Guatemala. So I went to Guatemala for two months to work uh, with Rigoberto Menchutum's foundation and Peace Jam to put on this conference. Um, and you see here the students, over 200 students attended the conference. Here they're doing a peace march for Mother Nature. Um, and during this conference, they're learning how to get their voices out in the community. They're engaging in difficult dialogues about uh, peace and um, problems in their community and problems they experience in their daily lives. And they're also celebrating their uh, cultural, her cultural heritage um, as indigenous people, uh, engaging in um, Mayan cosmovision ceremonies and uh, promoting you know, pride in that identity. Uh, it was a really amazing transformative experience that is really a key part of the Peace Fellowship, uh, something that makes it really unique. 
and uh, put this, I, this idea of peace education and uh, creating peaceful communities through dialogue, through uh, storytelling um, into, you know, it made it real for me. So since that time, I've come back to Bradford and uh, now I'm wrapping up my Peace Fellowship. And so the final step to wrap up the Peace Fellowship is to write the dissertation. Uh, some people write the dissertation about their applied field experience. I actually went a bit of a different direction. So I found in my town of Bradford, I've really circled back to this interest and love of the arts and how the arts can be used to um, mediate conflict, to prevent conflict, to communicate um, around difficult and political issues. So I'm actually doing my dissertation about Columbia. Columbia is in a, in a really key time for peace building right now. And I spent some time in Colombia this summer after Guatemala. I um, was really struck by this amazing culture and presence of street art and graffiti in uh, Colombia. So I'm writing about how this kind of art in public places can be used to uh, reduce urban violence um, as a form of, of communication um, and as a form of participation in democracy. So um, this is a last photo of, of um, my AFE. Sorry, jumping back because I forgot this photo. Um, this is uh, Rotarians actually from Cape Saltenango, Guatemala. Um, who are with me and Rigoberto Menchu, uh, part of the summer, uh, part of the conference, actually. Uh, we wanted to do a service project. And um, so I reached out to Rotarians in the area, obviously as a Rotary Peace Fellow and a, a former Rotary actor. I really wanted to get more community involvement, involve Rotary where I could. So these amazing people from the Los Altos Club they donated over 200 small trees and which the children planted during the weekend with the help of local community leaders who identified a site for reforestation. And then all of these Rotarians came on the day uh, to help plant the trees and, and to be present, um, which was a really special moment. Also in Guatemala, I had the chance to um, reconnect with some of the previous projects that our Rotary Clubs, our, our Rotary Clubs had worked on. And this is me meeting with a young girl, um, Blanca Stella, who um, we installed a clean burning stove for several years ago. And since then, myself and another Rotary actor have been um, helping to sponsor her education. Um, and uh, this is through an organization called Mayan Families in Guatemala that uh, collaborates a lot with Rotary and Rotaract. So jumping back forward to my dissertation, uh, is some, just some quick examples of the kind of uh, street art that I'm talking about. Um, this art is expressing that we all count and um, showing uh, examples of some populations that um, for various reasons are often not uh, counted, uh, their votes are not counted or they don't have access to voting. Um, so they're excluded from the democratic process. There are many artists in, in Colombia who are using indigenous subjects to make in, um, indigenous cultures and, and heritage visible in an urban space. Um, and this is another prominent artist. These are all photos I took this summer who, um, who documents uh, homeless people in the city um, to make them visible and bring awareness to the issues around um, homelessness. So we're next in the future. Uh, currently in December, I'm done with my dissertation and then I'm hoping to continue to work in cultural diplomacy and use uh, facilitate uh, programs that use the arts use dialogue, exchange, um, and play to mediate conflicts and prevent conflicts. So I'm looking at um, international nonprofits and, and larger international organizations like the UN. Um, and I have Rotary to thank for making this 
this amazing experience happen. So thank you guys so much for uh, inviting me and I hope you got some insight into the Rotary Peace Fellowship and all the amazing things, um, all the amazing opportunities that, that it affords. Awesome. Thank you so much, Lauren. That was terrific. Uh, and what a, what a wonderful presentation and way to introduce um, the Rotary Peace Program. Uh, when you get a chance, we could hit the stop share screen button. That'd be terrific. And we'll get it to make sure our viewers can see your lovely face. Uh, so we do have a few questions. Um, I'm not sure if Ken will have a, a question or comment. I'll let him think about that. But um, I'd, I'd actually like to start off the first question. Um, if you could actually talk a little bit more about uh, the, the process to become a peace scholar in the application process. I know you had outlined the steps, but I was, I was thinking more, uh, maybe some of our viewers would be interested in and our members be interested in learning more about um, the application process and how rigorous was that? Um, does your, your previous uh, schooling GPA matter? Um, what, how much do they take into account like your, you know, your job service, um, et cetera? And then whether or not there was an interview and how the interview went or if you have tips for interview process. Yeah, definitely. So you have to have at least three years of full time professional work experience in the peace building field. And you have to have a bachelor's degree. Um, they do care that um, you'll be able to um, you know, keep up with an academically rigorous program. So you're in that way, your grades and um, your undergraduate experience do matter. Um, but they, again, they have a wide variety of people from all over the world, from all different kinds of universities and academic backgrounds in the program. Um, so, you know, don't let anything discourage you from applying. Um, they really want to see people who are really motivated uh, to work in the field. Um, and what I was told during the application process, um, was really, you know, show who you are as a person and why you're motivated to do the work that you do. Um, they have a series of essays um, which change from time to time. So you have to do essays, um, recommendations, transcripts, all of those good things. And then, yes, there is an interview. So it really actually um, depends on your district, how this process goes. So in my district, and the way it typically works, is that you reach out to a Rotary Club who's closest to you and then tell them you're interested in the fellowship and then they'll help you uh, prepare your application and get you in touch with a district level committee that um, oversees the peace fellowships but um, occasionally uh, it works a bit differently sometimes your club will say we don't really know much about this they'll send you to the district um, sometimes uh, you might have more have to have more conversations if your district hasn't ever sponsored a peace fellow before. I was lucky that my district actually had a um, they had a recruitment process. They had an established committee. They had somebody at the district level who was in charge of this. So I did interview with my local Rotary Club, and then I went through a pretty uh, intensive interview process with my district level committee. Uh, one evening where I met with the a whole board of about 10 people um, and we went, you know, over my application with a fine tooth comb. And hopefully part of the process is that your local club and district, once they back you, they really want to see you be successful. So they will help you a bit, uh, go through your application, um, tweak things, revise, edit, um, so that, you know, you can be the present yourself as the best possible candidate. And then it's sent to Rotary International and uh, it's just a waiting, a waiting game from there. Okay, and then um, do you have to, I guess does Rotary International work with the, the university to accept, um, in theory, accept you as a candidate or do you have to apply to the university after you get the Peace Scholar grant? You do, you have, so after you, um, are approved um, as a, they call it a finalist for the Peace Fellowship, one of those 10 spots, then you have to apply to the university. Do you know if anyone ever becomes a finalist but doesn't get approved into a university? Oh, I don't, I don't think so. Um, I really think it's more of a formality. Um, 
the university does have some, uh, or at least representatives of the university have some role in the uh, choosing the final candidates. Um, so I think that they're kind of expecting your application. At least that was my experience in Bradford. And I assume it's similar at the other centers. Okay, very cool. Yeah. Um, we can turn it over to Ken for a question or a comment. I have uh, a lot of questions, but uh, <laughs> that, that was a really good presentation. Uh, it's really nice to see people abroad and, um, and Rotary affecting so many lives and, and continued, uh, continued presence as you're going through this process, like in Norway and different places. Um, my question is, uh, what's some of your favorite memories and uh, some of your hardest challenges? Hmm. Oh, that's such a that's such a good question. Yeah, like Mitty asks the question all the time, but I definitely really want to know the answer on this one. Uh, it's just really, I'd really like to hear. Yeah, well, I think some of my uh, favorite memories are um, the time that I got to share with the other Peace Fellows. Um, early on, I hosted a Thanksgiving at my apartment with all of the people from our class. Um, of course, you saw that we had those opportunities to uh, go to Oslo, to go to Belfast. Um, but in between there, we had a lot of chances to uh, spend time together, um, even just helping each other out with essay questions or, um, you know, bemoaning how much reading we had to do. Uh, they're a really, really amazing group of people. And I think I learned, you know, the most from it, them out of any of the experiences that I had. As, as far as challenges, um, you know, it's a very independent program. And so it was a challenge to find the um, internship um, while everything else was going on um, in terms of uh, finishing up a semester, writing a whole bunch of essays that are the grades for that semester um, and trying to set up all the logistics um, of going somewhere for the summer to kind of do the work that you want to do for, for a few months. Um, it's equally uh, challenging at this point because we have this amazing Rotary Peace Seminar that's coming up here in two weeks. We're all presenting on our work um, we have guest speakers, we have a peace fair uh, with local organizations, and we're advertising for it, and we're trying to do social media and everything, and we're also writing our dissertations. So it's uh, a lot of juggling in, in that regard. It sounds like it. Uh, one more question. You said there was 100 spots, uh, 50 for the program in Thailand, and then obviously 50 remaining for the peace scholarship. Um, and then 10 in America and then 40 abroad. Is that? Yeah. So there's five Rotary Peace Centers um, in Sweden, UK, um, the US, which is Duke, UNC, Chapel Hill, Australia, and Japan. And uh, those are the Peace Centers that have a master's program and have 10 fellows each year. Um, then the certificate program that's the Rotary Peace Center in Thailand and that's 50 people but they're actually uh, more people who are more advanced in their career um, I believe you have to have eight to ten years of work experience so it's more mid-career professionals uh, whereas I think the average age um, for our group is somewhere around like late 20s to early 30s yeah. thank you so much thank you Awesome. Thank you so much, Lauren, for presenting to our club. We really appreciate it. Um, our guest this week, again, has been Lauren, um, who is a Rotary Peace Scholar and former Rotary Actor. Uh, and Lauren, I'm going to turn it to you for any um, final words before I end the meeting. Uh, it's been really exciting and different to present on this kind of uh, forum, and really glad to uh, be involved in my first e-club meeting. Glad to reconnect with uh, my friend Mitty here and thanks so much for having me. If anyone has any questions about the Peace Fellowship or is interested to apply, um, reach out to Mitty and he can give you my, my contact information because I'm really happy to, to chat via email or Skype. 
Awesome. Thank you so much, Lauren. We really appreciate your time. Um, a link below to uh, this video will be a link to um, Lauren's video on YouTube, um, as well as some information about her. Um, and if you haven't yet, uh, make sure you leave a comment below um, into the meeting and then we'll see if we can get Lauren to respond to some of your questions for the comments as well. Um, thank you guys for joining us. We hope to see you um, next week. Take care, everyone. Bye.